Part 2. Phenomena Everyone Should Know Chapter 15. Evolution and the Origin of Homo Sapiens Right off the bat, it is important to know that evolution is a thing. It happens. It exists. It is a reliable band of knowledge that has made an impressive number of successful hypotheses. And all those Ilshanata have been thoroughly deduced to be the true first cause of the universe over 13 billion years ago. What has happened after that was a reasonably verifiable succession of physical causes that ultimately led to our current existence. Hmm? So as it happened, nothing made the first things in a hot, dense state. Then the hot, dense state cooled along with the increasing entropy enough to create the first fundamental particles. Then these fundamental particles gravitated into distinct clumps of nebulae, which were proto-galaxies. Which created the first stars, which created more secondary particles of denser atoms. Upon dying, these stars created supernovae, dispersing hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and other elements out into random directions of the universe. These elements coalesced into the rocks that made up Earth over 4.5 billion years ago. It took almost a billion years for Earth to cool enough to make liquid water and for the ideal conditions to make the first simple organic compounds to emerge via abiogenesis. Because Earth is within a closed system of consistent external energy from the sun, it allowed entropy to be less pronounced here than the rest of the universe. To create biological order. The simple organic compounds evolved into multicellular organisms about two billion years ago, who evolved into more complex vertebrates, who figured out sexual reproduction a billion years ago, who evolved into our common ancestor with fish, who evolved into our common ancestor with amphibians, who evolved into our common ancestor with reptiles, who themselves later split from a common ancestor into birds. We humans arose from a common ancestor of marsupials about 200 million years ago followed by a common ancestor to all placentals. Tens of millions of years ago, our family of the great apes began to evolve. We have a common ancestor with gorillas about nine million years ago, and a common ancestor with chimpanzees and bonobos shortly after that, on evolutionary type scales. The earliest bipedal ape emerged four million years ago, and the first specialized tools were used 3.5 million years ago. Curiosity drove Homo habilis out of Africa two million years ago, and Homo erectus, the stereotypical caveman, began using fire shortly thereafter. Neanderthals then came on the scene hundreds of thousands of years ago, that split and co-bred alongside Homo sapiens until the purebred Neanderthals went extinct around 38,000 BC. Then, the evolution of thought and consciousness began to take place, to explain the origin and truth of Homo sapiens. The oldest known written language was about 5,500 years ago, which is only between 200 and 300 generations of Homo sapien evolution, which allowed mythologies to go fairly unchanged for multiple generations. These mythologies birthed other mythologies, which were relayed with an air of historicity to validate the whimsical claims hold alongside the mythologies. The gullible believed the mythologies as historical fact to the point that they believed that the Earth was a fairly new creation alongside the newly enlightened man who had a level of consciousness capable of subduing nature to his own will. To an extent. Many claimed to speak on behalf of their creator or creators, contaminating the perfection of Zilchinata with bouts of somethingness to be feared and worshipped. But knowledge progressed. Science evolved. The precision of thought increased within the intellectuals of the population, which accelerated in the era called as the Age of Enlightenment, which began around 300 years ago. The hierarchy of sciences were thoroughly searched out. Darwinian evolution was introduced for biology, followed by the periodic table of elements for chemistry 10 years later. Then the standard model of particles for physics 100 years after that. And now, in the early internet age, with a generation of humans having full access to the knowledge found by generations past, seek a scientifically based, mathematical, and logically sound theory of everything. When they should be looking for a theory of nothing instead. Welcome to the next evolution of thought and consciousness, the theory of nothing. Where we are not even wrong, 
Not because we are pseudoscientific, but precisely because we will allow science to prove us wrong. The null hypothesis will always be there to contend against the ludicrous hypotheses that are believed by anybody. Presuppose nothing, and you will be presupposing no thing. And as for the less than ludicrous hypotheses, we will change our minds when sufficient evidence is brought forth. As we all should, yes, yes, yes. So on a more serious note, evolution of our direct past is actually a footprint of the ways the multiverse could have and did play out for life on Earth. It didn't have to be this way, necessarily. It was just one way out of the infinitely many that could have played out. Imagine the world still co-inhabited by Neanderthals, and all the peaceful and warring possibilities our current level of technology would have with them. Imagine the world where guerrilla society evolved the usage of tools a million years before Homo sapiens. And if the dinosaur-killing asteroid missed, imagine the world where one of the intelligent raptor species evolved the current level of human consciousness. These possibilities don't just span to the past, but the future as well. The possibility of octopi or elephants developing a writing system inspired by us and their future contributions to our bank of knowledge? Who needs aliens when other intelligent life exists here on Earth? There are possibilities of integrating humanity with technology for the sake of living longer. The possibilities of Omega Everything, past and future, are quite infinite. Evolution is thus a constant rolling of the dice on life to see what will and will not work. For instance, the invention of the car gave us a time where the more conscientious driver was selected for more often than not. The invention of vaccines also give the conscientious individual an advantage over the diseases they protect us against, more so than the individuals who are against them. So long as the multiverse has some probability of a certain outcome, the possibility of evolution selecting for that path will remain open. A random cosmic ray turning on a gene here a beneficial mutation there, the changes are so insignificant that we only notice when they become a problem. So what evidence is there for evolution by natural selection? Let's see. There's the E. coli long-term evolution experiment that has observed tens of thousands of generations of E. coli adapting to various conditions. There's also several fruit fly experiments conducted, including one that created a fly specifically adapted to low oxygen environments. Not to mention the Darwinian finches that evolved into 15 different species on the Galapagos Islands. Even the distinction between Chihuahua dogs and St. Bernard dogs is an example of evolution, even though it is human-guided in all of these instances. But if humans by themselves can create such drastic changes via eugenics and selective breeding in a short amount of time, the change in environment and climate over longer periods of time should happen naturally. Evolution is thus consistent with the null hypothesis, because it is true. The simplest solution to explain our current existence is that the universe we see is billions of years old. And with those billions of years, the observations point to the fact that the mathematical and philosophical equivalent to nothing gave rise to physical dimensions at the Big Bang, which gave rise to fundamental particles, which gave rise to chemical elements, which gave biological life the inevitability to emerge naturally on a planet with the right chemical makeup and external energy input. Now, evolution doesn't answer the question of how did we specifically come to be? For this question, there are four answers that I suggest are all indicative of the same phenomena. Faith in the multiverse, appeal to dumb luck, faith in a creator who had us specifically in mind, or the honest, I don't know. The multiverse gives us a sense of inevitability and commonality among the set of everything that exists. Dumb luck gives us a sense of freedom and chaotic holiness to our existence. The creators give us a sense of divine purpose and ordered holiness. And the unknown drives our curiosity to figure out the actual truth of the matter. Evolution is not very intuitive. It was and is a hard-fought hypothesis that is still working its way through the minds of the normies of the population. We only ever see the world as it is right now. We weren't there 1,000 years ago, we weren't there 1 billion years ago, but we can look up into space and see the electromagnetic footprint of times past, and dig up the massive evidence from times past to reach the truth of the current state of our own existence. And the evidence is clear for those 
who look without the lens of confirmation bias. Darwinian evolution by natural selection is a reliable branch of knowledge to believe in. From my perspective, it is only a few underlying logical axioms shy of being deemed an objective truth of reality. And when using the term objective in the commonplace way, it is an objective truth. So you can believe in the general concept of biological evolution with a 99.99% .99 degree of confidence.